thing to have. So what would you like to say to Simon about what you'd like him to do or what would change in, in government policy? Um, well, you've only just started the job, so I can't give you, I can't give you a roast, awesome, unfortunately. He's a very nice person. I'll come back again. Um, I mean, I, I got it. I, to be honest, I'm going to start that off with a compliment. Um, I saw uh, you're trying to introduce regulation for psychotherapists, which, if done properly, I think is it would be fantastic. Um, currently in Ireland, uh, psychotherapists aren't actually regulated by the government. Yeah. They're regulated by self-regulatory organisations. Now, there's many fine psychotherapists out there, but they're sullied by the fact that there are other psychotherapists offering CBT alongside fucking angel readings. This is real. I know it's hilarious and it is funny, but however, if you're suffering from anxiety, if you're suffering from depression, a faulty, irrational view of yourself or a view of other people, it's of no use to you to be told about an angel. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't work. If you want angel healing, fine, go to an angel healer. But please don't put it alongside CBT or emotional intelligence or something like that. We need to have regulations so that has, that can stop. That, that's not good enough. If I go to a dentist for my tooth, I don't want to hear about his magic the dog. <laughs> Seriously. Do you know what I mean? And if, if you could pull that off, Simon, then fair play to you. So, are you going to do it? Are you going to do that politician thing where you don't really do it? <laughs> <laughs> and we were getting along so great. Uh, no, we've already started it. Uh, we put it out. Uh, people have until November to come back with their views on the plans I put out, and I hope to bring in laws uh, early in the new year. Fair play. Okay. So, apart from the compliments, line boy, what uh, less complimentary thing might you have to say? Since he's sitting here and he's very open. Person. I don't know yet. <laughs> like, honestly, he doesn't start on his job yet. I've not given a year. <laughs> Well, I'm talking about more what you'd like to see happen. Really. What, what would I like to see happen? Um, I'd like to see you sit down with somebody involved in education and to introduce mental health into education as rigorously as Bishop McQuaid wanted it with fucking religion. <laughs> <laughs> because again, it's so simple. It's just kids should... And, and the thing is as well is that like kids should know about this stuff. Parents should know about this stuff. A parent who knows about emotional intelligence, the weapons that they have there to raise a, a competent adult who has a good sense of self-esteem. Emotional intelligence is savage. To understand, like when I was suffering really bad anxiety, really bad depression, I, I did not know if I was feeling sad. I did not know if what I was feeling was anger. I hadn't a clue. I was awash with a very intense something. And through uh, a couple of years of, of, of just teaching myself, I, I can now confidently know when I'm afraid. I can know the difference between anger and jealousy, which is a very important one. I can know the difference between anxiety and fear. Fear is good, there's lots of frightening things. Anxiety is never really that good. Anxiety is when you tend to have an irrational reaction to something that isn't really a threat. But fear is great, that's real, that can motivate you. But anger is good as well, but like rage isn't, rage isn't good at all. But through emotional intelligence, I can actually identify these things in me and know the difference. We should have that in school. Kids should know about that. I know it's not your department, but speak to whoever that boy is.